Welcome to Economics 103. This is Microeconomics. Uh, today what we're going to be taking a look at is just a basic introduction to the course itself. We're going to be taking a look at the online learning management system, that is D2L Desire to Learn. Just some basics about navigation on this site and how the course overall will be laid out. Okay, so here we have D2L's main login site. Again, how we would access this would just be online.comosin.ca. That one right there. Notice up here it jumps to a different URL. That's that's fine. Online.comosin.ca is what you'll want in order to be able to access this. To log in, you just have your C number and your password. Once those are put into place, you log in to D2L. On here, once it loads, you'll have a listing of all your courses down the left-hand side. For myself, there's the two sections I'm currently dealing with. Business Statistics, Biz 230, and Econ 103, Microeconomics. You select your corresponding relevant course. For purposes here, I'm using the Econ 103 Microeconomics splash page, but even if you are in Business Statistics, the layout is identical. The only differences that you'll notice is it'll say, hey, welcome to Biz, 1, uh, Biz 230. Wow, I forgot the number there. Welcome to the Business 230 business statistics same thing up here same thing up here otherwise everything will be nearly identical the hyperlinks will just lead you to a bit of a different area uh, what we're going to be taking a look at is these toolboxes these toolbar along the top and all the different tool drop downs as well as this main splash page to start off the main one that we're going to look at well you open up course home this is where we currently are the one that you're going to be going to every day, or at least once a week, is going to be this checklist tool. This is going to be your primary place to check in. So as we go to the checklist, so okay, we go here, we go to checklist. Right now we have a checklist for week one. So this here is going to be what the expectations are for the week, what needs to be completed by you. So as we go through it, week one, read the syllabus. Well, where do I find the syllabus? Ah, no needs to worry about that. I'll show you where you can find it later, but everything is hyperlinked right here in the checklist. So ultimately, this is the one and only place, if this is the only place you went through to throughout the semester, you'd be fine. So first one, read the syllabus. Let's presume you've done that. Second one, watch the intro video. Well, again, intro video hyperlinked there. You're watching it right now. Great, you've done that part there. Carrying on, what else do we have for this first week? Post an introduction to the discussion board. Well, you can access that through right here. I'll show you how you can get through it through the discussion toolbar as well. But discussion board, we'll come back and talk about that guy. Next thing we're going to do, read chapters 1 and 2 from the textbook. So we'll talk about what that means, what the textbook is, and other resources available. But another resource for us. Watch the video playlist. Okay, video playlist, that's not this one. This is the video lectures overseeing chapters one and two. Again, same source, but hyperlink to find that. Once you've completed that, you've gone through the material for the week. Well, there's quiz one, quiz one hyperlinked here. And the first quiz, again, graded. Ooh, graded. These are grade items. You'll want to spend specific attention looking at this. Make sure that you're actually getting done the stuff that matters for you and your final grade. So that's our checklist. That's the basic of what we should look at each week. It will be outlined week in advance to say, okay, this is what I need to get done. This is what my focus is. Kind of give you some direction for the week. I'm just going to hit cancel rather than save just so that it doesn't overwrite, but save and your checklist is complete. So that's our checklist toolbar. Well, the checklist is your main one-stop shop, discussions is the next one we're going to take a look at. Again, keep in mind, everything will be linked through the checklist form. Underneath discussions, we have two categories. First is going to be just general questions, like sort of a, what will become a running frequently asked questions or fact form. In this case here, you can just post general questions you may have about D2L, content, the course, etc. And it serves that either myself or another student could answer and provide kind of a running, a running common questions that we get to throughout the semester. Uh, how do we use the forms? Well, let's go in and take a look here. You open up, click the hyperlink. 
we'll go to start a new thread. And then once we have this, it's just entering these information. So we could um, post, I have a question for our topic and then what your question is. There we go. So we post our question. Uh, if we wanted to take a look at updates for when people respond to it, we can hit this subscribe button and it will send us updates every time somebody responds to our question and or it checks to do that automatically. To finish, we would just hit post. It would show up in that frequently asked questions uh, thread and we could view it from there. Replying to threads, very similar. You'd open up the person's thread who has posted the question and hit the reply button. I'm just going to hit cancel to prevent posting that and head back to the main discussion list. Okay, so that's the main generic questions, frequently asked questions. If we keep scrolling down, and as we add more and more, you're going to have to keep scrolling down farther and farther, we have our first graded discussion board. And again, this was linked to directly from checklists. This is the same one from the checklists. And this is just our introduction. Being an online course, it's a bit cold, it's a bit distant. It's uh, nice to put a little bit of a human element into this. So just a quick introduction, who you are, what you're doing, why you're here, anything else fun that you might want to share with the group. This will be available for everyone to see, but uh, first graded aspect of the course, first bit of grade you can take. So that's our discussion board. As we carry on, new discussion will be added each week. The idea behind it, one question from the content that we've covered. Expectation is that you work through, you post your answer to the question, and then you respond to appear. So they don't need to be long-winded responses. They don't need to be extravagant. They can simply be, hey, awesome, we got the same answer. Way to go. Or, oh, we got different answers. I think you are right because X, Y, Z. Or I think I am right because X, Y, Z. So just very limited, doesn't need to be in depth, but weekly questions that will be posted and the expectations that you respond and you respond to appear. That's our discussion board. Next one carrying on along the top is our quizzes. <clears throat> Ultimately, there's going to be 12 of these quizzes plus our midterm and final. So I guess you could say 15 all said and done. Right now we have two posted. This would be week one, week two. These quizzes, you have three attempts to complete them and your best out of three is scored. With the exception of the midterm and the final, so out of the 12 weekly quizzes, I score your best 10 out of the 12. So if you have a bad week, you weren't able to get to one of the weekly quizzes, or you just didn't do very well on it, don't worry, your two lowest quiz scores are dropped altogether. As we go and we open them up, quiz one fundamentals, let's just take a look at this guy here. We have, very importantly, the description and directions. Make sure you read this. This isn't just here for fun. This is important information for you with the quiz. Big things here, best of three attempts, no time limit, only one question per page. You cannot move back through the test. So ultimately, these quizzes pull from a very large test bank. Then once they pull from that large test bank, every question is randomized into a different order. And then you can only view one question at a time. Once you answer the question, the answer is saved. You cannot go back and update. Ultimately, this here is all just to ensure academic honesty that there is no collaboration between many students as we go through this. Unfortunately, as we've gone through the last bit of the spring semester of 2020, through the summer, now into the fall, we have seen an unfortunate a very unfortunate explosion in cases of academic dishonesty and the resulting handing out of zeros and failing of courses as a result. So certain steps being taken on our side, of course many steps being expected on your side as well. Final bit on the directions. Make sure you read how the answer is to be reported. If it's a numerical answer that required you to do some calculations, typically I ask for two decimal points. Now, doesn't mean that always the answer needs two decimal points. The answer might be 35. If the answer is 35, but I ask for two decimal points, D2L is not that smart. It just says, hey, we need two decimal points, so you need to record 3500. 0, 0. 
That is a difference between the question being right or wrong. So really make sure you take a look at that and you follow appropriately. Learning objectives. Uh, here for each one, we'll have the learning objectives, what the expectation is for the quiz, what are the big ideas I expected you to get out of this chapter or out of this content. So big thing to take a look at here. Make sure that, hey, you know, can do that and the quiz will just reinforce that bit there. Um, let's take a look at the quiz once we start it. Doesn't look like I can start it from the student view. So let's just go back. Same directions, all of that, and we can go start the quiz. Once we start the quiz, we see, okay, we have all of our 10 questions, 10 pages, and we have our question that we are to consider. We have all of our information and then the question itself. Here we go, calculate how many sticks of butter this country could produce if they shifted all their production to butter. Record your positive answer to two decimal places. Right? So just like we said in the instructions, this needs to be recorded to two decimal places, even if it's a whole number. From here, you have two options. You have the big blue button that draws your eye, submit quiz. If you do this, you've only done one question. The best you could do is 10%. So it will warn you, confirmation, do you want to submit your quiz? No. What you want to do is you want to go to the next page, right? We have 10 pages, 10 questions, next page, It'll still give you a warning, right? But what does this warning say? It says, okay, if you move on to the next page, you cannot come back. So are you sure you're happy with your answer is pretty much what it's saying. So let's say yes, we're good to move on to the next question. We get another question. Oh, this one looks very similar. Again, they're being pulled from a large test bank. Sometimes we get similar questions back to back. Same thing here. Question, calculate the opportunity cost of producing an additional stick of butter positive to two decimal places. So again, record our answer. I'm just making up these answers. I have no idea. I didn't even read the question really. Next page, yes. Once you get through the whole bit, you will submit the quiz. Yes, you're sure you want to submit the quiz. And it says, okay, you're about to do it. Are you sure you want to? Yes, I'm sure I want to. And it gives you your score. Uh, looks like I did not do very well. Okay, so that's how we submit quizzes, that's how we work through that, and that is our quiz tool. Doesn't look like I'm doing very well on this. Next one along the top is our assignments. If we jump over here, we're not going to need to use this until closer to our midterm and final dates. These are the due dates that we currently have set for midterm one, midterm two, and the final. Part of our final is a take-home portion to be completed and submitted as a PDF document. That is important. It will only accept one PDF document. We'll go through how to make sure, how to upload, how to save as PDF and all that as we get closer to the date. But keep these dates in mind. These are the midterms and final dates. They can also be found in the syllabus as I've recommended you read. So this is the assignments. Uh, there's nothing in here right now. If we open it, ultimately, this is just a Dropbox for you to add a file and drop in your take home portion of your file. Once it's uploaded, hit submit, and then it notifies me that you've submitted it and I can begin grading. Carrying on, next one we have is Collaborate. Collaborate is our online multi people all get in kind of meeting tool, very similar to Zoom or Google Meet or one of the many other alternatives out there. Uh, once we get click collaborate, you get a screen that's going to be somewhat similar to this. Uh, for the most part, we'll just be using this course room here. So we can just click that and join the course. Uh, if you need to dial in by phone instead of using your computer, you can use this uh, anonymous dial in. If we join the course room though, it shows up with your name and all that bit of information. It won't work perfectly because I'm already using the webcam, no one else is here, but we can get an idea of the basics. So basic join screen, from here you can mute your audio, share your video, you can raise your hand and ask a question. Here's some status and settings, so you can go through this, you can say hey you're away, you can leave. You can give feedback as to how you are with the session. Are you sad, confused, surprised, happy? Do you want it to go faster? Do you want it to go slower? 
do you agree or disagree with what's being said? So just a way that you can participate, get involved without uh, necessarily putting on your audio and getting involved that way. Over on the right hand side, we have this little purple ribbon. If we click and open this guy here up, we get our chat. So we can say hi and talk to everybody and it'll be a running chat between all participants. Going over, number of participants, attendees, well, just myself. Next one, sharing content. This is where we'll use a whole bunch. We can share a blank whiteboard. From this blank whiteboard, we can do all sorts of stuff. We can, right, we can draw a graph. Uh, maybe we're looking at GDP over time, something like that. So we can go, here's GDP time, and we can work through some kind of problem based off of that if need be. So whiteboard, likely we're gonna be spending a lot of time to be working through some problems, working through situations. Um, try to get a bit better than these squiggly lines that we're dealing with right now, and uh, typically spend a bit more time to make it a bit prettier. What else can we do? We can share the application screen. So what I currently have up on my monitors could share one of those or a specific window. Share camera, if we wanted to turn the webcam on. Right now it's already being used for this video so it won't work to share the camera. Share files, some PDF, some Word document, some file that we wanted to share to the group could hit share files and open that guy up. Polling, we could create little polls what is your thought of X, Y, Z? Open that up to the group and you can anonymously select your response and submit. Breakout groups, don't need to worry about this one, but if we wanted to break out into smaller little discussion groups, I could create those and send you off to that. Settings, not much to look at in here. If you wanna play around with it, you have your audio, video, not notification session. Uh, not, not much to play around with really though. Over the other side, we have your view controls. So if that was too small for you, you can make it bigger, you can make it smaller, you can do a best fit, and you can do actual size. So some different options you have to change the size of the presentation. This one here, session menu, not much to happen here. Big one for me is to start recording. Uh, just so you know, our collaborate sessions, etc., will likely be recorded. This way here, we have office hours, you asked a question, Oh no, you forgot the answer, you don't have the work, what's going on? Well, the recording will be saved and uploaded so that you can follow along and say, oh yeah, yeah, that's what we talked about, that's what we worked through. So, recording option there. And of course, right here at the bottom, when we're done, we can leave the session. And how well was it? We'll say it was excellent. Almost done with our toolbar. Next one we're looking at is grades. Now the actual grade layout is as laid out in the syllabus, but we can see the basics of it here as well. So grades, what we have is you have your grade categories, quizzes, participation, first project, second project, final, and then the corresponding subcategories. So really what we wanna focus on is the categories themselves, not the subparts. Quizzes, that's 15% of your grade. Right now, we just have quiz one and quiz two uploaded, each making half of that. As we load all fifth, or sorry, all 12 of them, well, this weight of each one will drop. So as we add more and more quizzes, this will change the overall quiz weighting. Participation, well, this comes from those discussion boards. Right now, there's only one graded discussion board posted. So as of now, that makes up your entire 15%. Again, these will be posted weekly with the exception of our midterm date, so about 12 discussions, and this will get changed to 1 12th of your 15% as you carry on. Projects, well, more or less you can think of these as midterm one, midterm two, and final. Uh, the midterm is gonna be broken up into two categories. First will be the D2L quiz portion. So very similar to that quizzes that we already looked at will be a little bit longer. Same kind of style though, one question per page. This will make up 15 out of the 20 marks for that first midterm. There will also be a take home portion. So the take home portion, this will take up five of the 20%. And this is the, as we saw in the assignments, it will be a higher level style question. Something like explain 
analyze, uh, might be an essay, might be a multi-step question from something we've worked on. Ultimately, this will be more difficult than the D2L quiz, multiple choice, true, false, uh, calculation. This will be higher level, purposely will be on the higher difficulty point. So two aspects of the midterms and both graded ultimately for your final overall 20% for midterm one, 20% for midterm two, and 30% for the final. Similar weighting throughout. 25% for the, sorry, 75% for the D2L, 25% for the final take home project. So that's your grade portion. As you complete stuff, it will be updated in here and we'll show you your final, oh, it's not gonna show right now, your final calculated grade. Okay, last one here. Oh, not quite last one, almost, almost there, content. Our content tab, for the most part, you won't need to access this. Again, everything you need is through the checklist. It will all be hyperlinked to where it is. But say week one, here's the syllabus, and now you're like week eight, and you're like, oh no, when is the next midterm? Well, you can always come either through the checklist, go back to week one and find it that way, or go through our content and find all our posted files through here. It'll be organized when we go through. Right now, all we have is the syllabus, so right now, this is all that's here. You can click on it, take a look at our schedule, and go, oh, okay, that's when the midterm is. Great. Okay, final one, class list. Class list, this here just shows us our list of everybody who's enrolled in the course. Right now, just myself. Uh, when you click on it, right, you can view the information of the individual, you can send them an email, sorry. The hyperlink sends an email. If you want to as well, you can use this little drop down and you can go view blog, view shared locker files or send an email. Okay, so there we go, that's your options there. Um, there's no blog, there's no shared locker files. Email is the only real option you have in that. Uh, what helps for an online course, right, to give faces to names, again, just to bring the human aspect into this online learning environment. It is helpful if you go up to your profile up here in the top right, and you go and select the profile aspect. From here, you can upload a picture. If you're comfortable doing so, well, it helps to put a face to the name, right? It makes it a bit more human, not just, hey, here's the other number or the other name, no idea what that means. If you want, if you have another nickname you go by, you can add that here. If you want to add social networks, feel free. Contact information, education, and work. Keep in mind, all of this is, I don't want to say public, but it is public amongst your classmates. So anything you add here, do so with, would you want to share it with, uh, potentially a few other strangers. So once you update that, you can save and close. That does the class list aspect. That does how to access your profile. Again, if you're comfortable, upload a picture, upload some information about you. Just creates that whole human aspect, makes it a lot less cold and robotic as we go through this online learning environment. Last bit, let's just jump back to Course Home. Course Home main site, let's quickly take a look at this. In the main bit here, we have our news. This is where all updates to the course will be posted. On the right side, we have myself, the instructor information, and then the calendar of due dates. So this is pulled from our checklist and just has the due dates based off of that. Let's go through some of the main items here of this welcome news item. Likely, if you're watching this video, you've already gone through this and you've watched the introductory video. Hopefully you did the next step, which was read the syllabus. Important bit there. Textbooks, let's talk about this quickly. Uh, right now we are using the ManQ textbook. It is our recommended textbook. It's the one that I'm teaching from how the course is organized by. It's available as an ebook. You can also order it through Amazon or our bookstore, etc. But it's not required. I'm not going to be having you do specific questions, read specific pages out of this book. Instead, there's many other free resources available, such as Khan Academy or OpenStax. Uh, let's take a look at OpenStax. It is an open, uh, free textbook online platform. 
Feel free to use this if you want. It has everything that we're going to be covering. The only difference is it's not in the same order. So you, you save the money, you're going to have to spend a little bit more time in finding the relevant material. For example, as we get through pretty quickly here, chapter three, we'll be taking a look at trade. In this textbook here though, chapter three is demand and supply. Oh no, what are we doing? Well, what you're going to have to do is if you want to go and look at and use this textbook, you're going to have to go and skim through production, perfect competition, and find the one that best lines up with trade. Here we go, chapter 19, international trade. So you see, okay, every textbook is organized a little bit of a different way. Chapters don't line up, but typically, especially for an introductory course like this, the chapter titles are often very similar. So instead of chapter three trade, we'd be going to chapter 19 trade. All the same content, just in a bit of a different order. So if you want to use this free online textbook instead of the man queue, that's fine. But keep in mind, I will be referring to the chapter numbers based off of man queue. You will have to do some digging to find out what it is on the OpenStack side. But otherwise, great resource has tons of extra questions in it as well with answers, etc. So great, great extra resource. What else do we have? Uh, we have our lecture videos. So right now we have the intro video as well. There will be a lecture video for each of our chapters that we are going to be going through. I'll try to keep them as short and brief as I can. Typically we'll do a lecture video. We'll do a follow-up video where I work through an example question. That way there you see what's going on and how you would approach one of the questions from the chapter. Week one and two should be posted by the time you're viewing this. And then once we move on to week two, the week three video will be posted. I'll try to always stay a week ahead in videos. That way there, if you need to move ahead, you can. If you fall a bit behind, well, try not to do that. This is a quite intensive course. There's lots that we end up covering and it'd be easy to fall drastically behind. Um, if something happens, right, there's always your extraneous events posting a week ahead so that if something happens, well, hopefully we're still good for that week ahead. Um, somebody comes down sick, I come down sick, etc. So we'll do our best throughout the whole semester to keep it one week ahead. Office hours, those will be held through Collaborate. Um, great place, you can drop in, you can say hi, ask questions, re-go through material that wasn't necessarily clear. This is a great resource. We'll have it for an hour each time on Thursdays at 1.30. But what this is not, this is not the situation for me to go and do the lectures through these office hours. If you come to the office hours and you're like, hey, Keith, I don't understand elasticity at all. And I'm like, okay, what have you looked at? And you haven't done any of the readings. You haven't looked at any of the posted videos. You haven't attempted any of the quizzes, anything like that. You're just like, I don't get it. Teach it to me. I'm going to say sorry. Go take a look. Come back next week. We'll go through it then. If you've read through the stuff, you have taken a look at the videos, you've tried some questions, and you're stuck at one concept, you're stuck at a few concepts, well, okay. We could take the full hour then. You've done the work, you've put in the effort, I am willing to more than double or triple that effort to make sure you understand, to make sure you get through the course. So office hours, great resource for that. Big thing is that there's the expectation that you've put in the effort first, you're not just coming to this as a teach me because I couldn't be bothered. So office hours, once a week, we can hold them more frequently if there's the will, but at least once a week as posted. Quizzes and midterms, we've already discussed these, we've already taken a look at this, so you can follow and read through as need be. Discussion boards, same idea, we've already looked at that. And then our final notes. So we'll finish off with this. We're online, it's less than ideal for many of us. Uh, keep in mind that I know that, you know that, we'll get through this, right? It's not ideal, maybe this isn't how you wanted to take Econ 103. Don't worry, we'll get through this doesn't mean that I'm willing just to bend over and get everybody passing just because. But if you put in the work, if you're putting in the effort, I will meet, I will match, I will exceed that effort to help you get through this course. 
if you're not putting in the effort, if you're not putting in the work, don't expect me to be putting in a bunch to get you to where you need to be. What does that mean? Well, what that means is if we come up to the first midterm here, second midterm, final, whatever it might be, and it's a few days before and you email me, Keith, I have no idea what I'm doing, help. And I go and take a look and you haven't been accessing resources. You have not been accessing D2L. You have not been putting in the effort on your side. I'm going to say sorry. I'm going to say sorry. There's not the time right now. This is not the time or place to get the help for this. If, however, you go and you are looking at all of the resources, you are looking at all the material, you are trying, you are in contact with me as we go through the course, and things are just not clicking. Still, it might be two days before that midterm again. And you're like, Keith, I'm not getting this concept. Great. You've been putting in that work. You've been putting in that effort. And you're reaching out for help. Yes, I will step up. Yes, I will be there. I will get you to where you need to be for this midterm. And hopefully we can all succeed. Big difference there between those two stories was you. Big difference was you and the effort you have put into your success. The more effort, the more dedicated you are to this, well, the more dedicated, the more effort I will put in for you to be successful as well. So that's probably the biggest takeaway from this. What if you have questions though? How do you reach out? Well, kind of in order as to how you should approach it. First thing you should do if you have a question is either check the discussion board or post to the discussion board. Likely your question is somebody else's question as well. If it's not there or you don't think it's relevant, you can ask during an office hour session or you can email me. Um, both of these interchangeable. Often email is probably the next go-to. Uh, one thing to recommend or to recommend, one thing to notice though is that if you post something, if you, oh my goodness, jumbling my words. If you email me something and I'm like, wow, that was a great question. I'm probably going to get a hundred of these questions. I might not answer your email. I might just copy paste your email into our discussion board fact and reply to you, please check the discussion board. I'm not being snarky, I'm not being short, not being passive in that. It's just I'll post your response and your question to the discussion board and rather than answer the question twice, once in the discussion board, once in the email, I'm just sending you an email to direct you to the right place. So if you send me an email and I don't respond with the answer and just respond with check the discussion board, it may very likely be that I've just copied your question to here and because I feel it's just a great question for everybody to see. Okay, so that's our review of the learning management system, D2L. If you have any questions from this, please feel free to shoot them my way. You can email me. You can post it to the discussion board as commented. And uh, what we'll be looking at, I'll post it to the news here shortly. Not here yet, but likely will be by the time you have access to this. We'll aim to have a session just open, won't be mandatory, during the first week where we can log on to collaborate, meet, say hi, ask any questions that we may have, and go through the syllabus D2L again if you want it in that one, well, more face-to-face -face kind of environment. Again, it won't be a mandatory session, but it will be available. I'll post that on D2L as to when that date and time will be. Thanks.